Hello everyone, welcome to Cutie Pie Collective. Today we are going to be doing Becoming a Scribe, How to Make Medieval Scrolls, Part 2, Paper and Scroll Layout. Okay, now it's time to get our scroll set up. First things first, paper. What kind should you be using? There are a few different options and some things to avoid. Most scribes in my group either use Bristol or Perg. Bristol is a thick paper that's good for a variety of projects. It stands up to our paints and it has a good surface texture for calligraphy. We like to use the vellum finish because it has more texture and therefore seems more historically correct. Perg is short for pergamonata. This paper is as close as we can get to aged parchment without using actual animal skins. It has a slightly mottled look and is also translucent, meaning it's a bit see-through. It also has a very similar feel to what you would expect from parchment. Perg is a bit on the pricier side though, therefore we don't usually recommend it to scribes who are just starting out. Now you might be wondering if you can use a different paper for your scroll. I would not recommend using copy paper because it isn't thick enough to handle the paint without warping badly and becoming hard to write on. You might be tempted to try using a cardstock paper, but those papers can have a bad surface texture both for painting and for writing with calligraphy nibs. Though it's also said that Bristol paper is a kind of cardstock. It's just made in the proper thickness and texture for the kind of art we are wanting to do. Therefore, we recommend Bristol paper for the majority of our new scribes. It's sturdy and doesn't warp too badly with our paint. I use 11 by 14 inch paper for the majority of my scrolls. I like to make my scrolls big, but you can also cut down your paper to a different size if you feel like doing a smaller scroll. Now that we have gone over what paper to use, it's time to get our paper set up and ready for us to start making our scrolls. We start by measuring in one inch on all sides. This is our border. We don't illuminate here. This allows people to frame their scrolls a lot easier later on. Now it's time to figure out how much room you want to leave for calligraphy and how much room you want for illumination. I usually try to leave 30 to 40% of the scroll for the calligraphy, though you can definitely leave more. There are a lot of different ways to lay out a scroll. You can do it however you want or however works for the scroll you want to make. If you're basing this off of a reference, you can sort of try to judge it by that. This is the reference I'm going to be using in these videos. I think it looked rather cute and I think it will help me display all of the different parts of scroll making rather well. Alright cool! Our paper is all set up and we are ready to get sketching. I'll see you in the next video.